In this video, we'll learn to connect our single, dual, and four port audio gateways. These gateways pull digital audio from a network and convert it to analog. One of the most common use cases for them is to extend one-way paging to common areas like hallways and cafeterias. These areas typically don't require individually programmable IP speakers, so analog speakers are used instead. Before we go any further, let's look at the materials that we'll use in this example. We'll need our Valcom IP audio gateway, Valcom self-amplified speakers, some category cable, precision screwdriver, a punch down tool with 66 and 110 blades, electrician snips, a 66 block and some bridging clips, and some short screws to attach our 66 block to our backer board. When we move into the two and four zone audio gateways, we'll be utilizing VM186 wiring blocks, which are included in those gateways. This is a single port gateway, so we won't use those VM186 wiring blocks just yet. We'll use those on the next example. The connections on the single zone gateway are different than the two and four zone, so we're gonna take a look at that one first. There are various inputs and outputs on the back of the unit. You can find more about all of them in the installation guide that we'll link in the description of this video. For our purposes, which again is to extend a single zone of one-way paging, we'll be using the output terminals labeled page on the back of the unit. This output provides audio for up to 40 daisy chain self-amplified speakers. To connect, we'll be using standard category cable like this Cat5e. It's common practice to isolate the local connections from the field wiring using a third-party 66 block. These are inexpensive and available through most low voltage supply houses. So the first thing we're gonna do is mount the 66 block to our backer board. Sixty-six blocks have four columns of punch-down terminals. The two left columns, we'll call A and B, are paired. And the two right columns, we'll call C and D, are also paired. But the two pairs are independent of each other. That's where these bridging clips come in to go across the two center pairs. So we're gonna punch down on this side, that's gonna to lead to our head end, and we're gonna punch down on the far right side, and that's gonna lead out to our field wiring, to our speakers. Then we're going to connect the two by using one of these metal bridge clips over those to, to bridge them together. And that gives us a point of isolation that we can remove and troubleshoot at a later date if we need to. On our category cable, strip back the jacket to access the pairs, and we'll use the blue-white pair to connect to the page output of our gateway. So I do want to point out that this backer board is meant to be mounted on a wall in a IDF uh, somewhere within your facility. This is typically not done on the desktop. This can be done while this is mounted on the wall, but for the sake of demonstration, we have it on our desktop so that obviously we can film it. So once we've got our category cable, our blue pair specifically attached to our page output of our single zone gateway, we're going to actually cut this cable again and use it to connect to this side of the 66 block, and then we're gonna take the rest of the cable and run it out to our speaker. So I just wanted to point out, we don't need to strip back our jacket since we're gonna be punching down using a 110 punch blade to the 66 block. And also wanted to point out that each of these conductors will go on a separate row of terminals on the 110 block and continue out the other side in the same order that you have them on this side. We'll strip back the jacket on the speaker side and this will run out to our self-amplified speakers and I'll show you how to connect that in just a second. I'd also like to point out, keep as much twist as you can in the wires that are running uh, anywhere within your system. That twist is helpful for preventing crosstalk. Uh, there's some documents that I'll reference in the description that go into detail about that if you're interested in reading up on it. Next, we'll insert our bridge clips horizontally across the B and C terminals for each of those conductors. 
This will establish a connection between what you've punched down on terminals A and D. So now that they are connected to each other, and again, these bridge clips can be pulled off to isolate the field wiring from the head end. Power for our speakers will be connected separately and does not come from the gateway. You'll need a Valcom 24 volt DC power supply that can provide sufficient output for the amount of speakers that'll be used. Use the orange white pair to connect to the positive and negative outputs of the power supply. Be sure to note which conductor of the pair was connected to the positive output and which was connected to the negative. So many of the Valcom power supplies have screw terminals. The one that we have here is just a plug-in wall wart and it has bare terminals. Obviously, in the field, you would use some sort of uh, wire connector or electrical tape uh, on your electrical connections. Even though it is lo uh, low voltage, it's still definitely good practice to do that. Then we're gonna attach our orange-white pair for our power to an adjacent set of terminals uh, on this 66 block. If you're using multiple zones, if you're doing a multiple zone system, it's probably a good idea to put your power separate than your uh, zones of speakers just to keep everything even more separated uh, and to, to have a point of isolation for troubleshooting. But in our case, for just this example, we're just gonna use the same 66 block. We're just gonna use a pair. We'll skip a couple of uh, columns and, and use a pair that's a little further down to punch our power down. And then once again, we'll use bridge clips to establish our connection between our A and D terminals. So from your 66 block, we'll go to the first speaker location and then we'll actually cut our category cable in two. We're gonna cut right into it. And then we're gonna splice the like colored conductors together. Like we used solid blue and blue white for audio and we used the solid orange, orange white for power. So we're gonna, we're gonna twist those like conductors together because what we're going to do is we are actually going to go from our 66 block and our audio gateway to our next speaker in the, in the chain. So this is how you would daisy chain the speakers together. And then you just repeat that for each subsequent speaker location. Then we'll connect the blue-white pair to the terminals labeled tip and ring. Then we'll use whichever conductor color you used for positive from your 24 volt power supply. We'll go to the terminal labeled ground and whichever color you used for negative will go to negative 24 volt terminal. So now with this speaker location, you have this coming from your head end, this going out to the next speaker. And again, that's just a continuation all the way along the entirety of the run of speakers that you're doing. The speaker wiring is the same regardless of whether or not you have a gateway that's a single zone, dual zone, or, or four zone. In lieu of the screw terminals that are found on the back of the single zone gateway, both the two and the four port audio gateways utilize RJ45 connections. To connect our speakers, we'll use a special wiring block that's included with these. You'll get four of them with a four zone and two with the two zone, called a VM186. Now this VM186 attaches to the back of this gateway via patch cable that's included. If you need to mount the wiring block further away from the gateway than the included patch cable allows, you can use standard patch cables. For our example layout, we're gonna, again, just connect one zone to this four port gateway. You'd simply repeat this process for additional zones. So we're gonna mount our VM186 to the backer board first, and we're gonna take a look at the connections inside of that. So the cover on the VM186 is super easy to remove. There are slots on the side where you can just pry that right off and the connections are actually we're going to turn it this way so the rj45 connection is at the top and i'm going to put a diagram on screen that's going to show you what uh what we're looking at here we have some screw terminals and we have some punch down terminals we're actually going to use the 110 punch downs 
and we're gonna reuse the wiring from our single zone example, just because it's here, you already understand from this point out to the speakers, it's exactly the same. So mounting the VM186 to the backer board, you have a couple of different choices. If you have like a nice smooth backer board, you can use the 3M tape that's included, or you can just put a small wood screw through it. It's got a hole already in it, and that's what we'll do for our example. Just like we did on our single zone gateway, we will use our blue-white pair to connect our audio for our speakers. On the punch down side of the block, we'll use the connection labeled audio output. It's not labeled on the block, it'll be labeled on the diagram. Disregard that the color of the punch down itself does not match the color of the pairs that we're using for our cable. Power connects the same way as it did with the single zone gateway. You have to run a power supply for our speakers and we're using the orange white pair. The power does not run through the VM186, so there's no additional connections other than for our particular purpose. Now the VM186 will do several other things and they're outlined in the instruction manual for the gateway, but for our purposes, all we need is to run the audio. Now we're just gonna put the cover back on. There's a, there's a small uh, opening on one end for cables and obviously the opening for the RJ45 on the other. Snap that back on. Then we're gonna take our gateway and we are going to connect to port number one on our gateway using our included patch cable. So before connecting your gateway to the network using the RJ45 connector on the front, that's regardless of whether it's a single, uh, two or four zone, be sure to test all your connections using a tone and pro, multimeter or continuity tester. Once all your, te all your connections are tested, connect your gateway, and it's important to note that the gateways are powered via PoE, but that PoE does not power the speakers. That's the, the reason for that separate power supply for the amount of speakers that you have. The gateway itself can be powered by a wall wart or a plug-in power supply as well, or by PoE. And all the specs are included for these uh, in the links in the description of this video. Programming of our audio gateways is done through the VIP 102B setup tool and is beyond the scope of this training. This free tool is available for download at valcom.com, along with a tutorial that explains all the different facets of programming Valcom IP devices. We highly suggest that you go check that course out to learn all the ins and outs of programming any of Valcom's IP endpoints. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and stay tuned for more content just like this one. Thanks, see you in the next video.